Before I start, maybe uh, uh, I should know that there are some simplification in the slides compared to the paper. So uh, for full details, see uh, the paper. Um, yeah, let's start with uh, what is this actually about. Uh, you see the title. Maybe uh, let's start with the camera calibration part. Um, today, the, now, uh, the prevalent method to camera calibration is uh, Zhang's method, which uh, uses planar calibration targets, which probably all of you know. And examples for this are the MATLAB toolbox, OpenCV, and the robot operating system. What uh, all these toolboxes have in common is that they provide the user some kind of feedback about uh, uh, the data captured so far, like the per view error or the screen coverage. However, what these uh, methods fall short at is answering the following question, uh, where to place the pattern next? And this is the focus of our work. There's a related work which actually tackles this question already, and this is uh, April Kyle by Richardson et al. And what you see here is the method in action. Um, the wire ray display, a wireframe display is the target pose, and uh, the user is now supposed to match it with the real target. So how did they arrive at this uh, suggestion? Basically, they have a fixed set of 60 uniformly distributed poses in the view space, and for each of these poses, they generate a synthetic measurement, add it to the calibration set, and recalibrate. And then guide the user to the pose which has the minimal error. So uh, basically, this is just an exhaustive search, uh, only using 60 sampling points. This is because uh, um, calibration has to perform 60 times, and it's quite involved, so it takes them uh, between one and two seconds to generate a new pose suggestion. Um, our approach, on the other hand, tries to explicitly exploit the geometric properties of the camera calibration problem. And we also relate poses to explicit constraints on uh, um, the parameters we try to estimate. This allows us to analytically generate, uh, generate the pose sequence, and this is much faster. It uh, only takes uh, around 100 milliseconds uh, to generate a pose suggestion. This is also like the outline for the remains of the talk, and we continue with the um, geometric properties. So uh, think of the pinhole a camera model we use, and let's turn it into a calibration problem. For this, we assume a planar calibration target, so let's say uh, the guy on the left is a cardboard cutout, and Zhang's method now tries to simultaneously estimate the intrinsic properties, which are simplified by the focal length f, and the um, pattern pose, which is again simplified to the distance z. Also, for the sake of the experiment, assume that the pattern is parallel to the image plane. Uh, to let this thing estimate something, um, let's say we have a slightly smaller image. So to explain this, there are two possibilities, and they are equally probable. Uh, the first one is that the pattern is further away, and the second one is that uh, um, the focal length is a little bit shorter. I'll toggle between them. And which of them is selected is basically uh, random or depends on image noise because this is an ambiguity um, in the camera model. Um, also um, so-called singularity, and we want to av avoid something like this. And to do so, uh, we have observed some rules. Uh, first of all, the pattern must not be parallel to the image plane. If we observe this, we have uh, perspective shortening, and this can resolve this ambiguity. Also, um, the pattern must not be coplanar in any two views because it doesn't add any information. But instead, we should uh, maximize the angular spread. What I mean by this is the number of rotation between the image plane and the target plane. Um, I just leave the claims as is on the slide. Instead, I refer you to the work by Sturm and Maybank, which is uh, cited in the footnote, which specifically refer to the singularities. For now, let's com uh, continue uh, to the camera model or the mathematical formulation of it. Uh, we have a projection function pi, which uh, uh, takes uh, the camera pose, which is colored purple here, and some parameters, which are colored green, and uh, uses uh, them to pro uh, project um, 3D point P. If you uh, uh, look at the right-hand side of the equation, you see everything is linear, and this is what gives rise to the ambiguities. Um, however, the typical camera model is not as simple as that, uh, but instead uh, we want to consider radial and tangential distortions. Uh, we add them by introducing the distortion function delta um, as following. And uh, um, as you see, the distortion function is applied post-projection. So the only thing it deals with is uh, moving 2D points to other 2D locations. Uh, instead of giving you the equation for distortion function, I just give you the results of uh, um, the distortion function with some specific parameters. 
And the color coding here is following. Blue means no distortion, so the point is not shifted, and red means maximal distortion or shifting. And as you can see for a consumer camera, which is this based on, um, the uh, dominant distortion is radial distortion. And uh, now with calibration, we performed with the task of measuring this function. So uh, now proposal here is to put as many sampling points as we can in the region where something happens. For instance, the top lower corner. And uh, I would argue that this is a, a quite good uh, position because radial distortion is really symmetric around the principal point and tangential distortion is also symmetric around the um, image axis. So by uh, looking in one corner, we can estimate both of them. But uh, let's uh, keep this a claim for now and continue on how to verify this. For this, we want to measure the parameter uncertainty. And uh, to do so, we employ the backward covariance transport. Without going too much into detail, it works by uh, assuming some uh, uncertainty on our input data, which are the pixel positions, and it's colored blue here. And uh, then by applying the Jacobian of the projection function, we arrive at the uncertainty of our, or the covariance metrics for the projection parameters. A note here is that the Jacobian is already computed as part of Zhang's method for the nonlinear optimization, so we get it for free. Um, so now that we have a feeling for uh, the parameter uncertainty, let's continue to an experiment. Um, for those uh, uh, who just woke up after the lunch, this is maybe the most important slide for my talk. Um, so what we see here uh, are on the left the uncertainties for uh, the pinhole parameters, uh, like principal point and focal length, and on the right you see the uncertainties for um, the radial distortion coefficients. Um, this is uh, uh, measured after, for calibration after adding in each uh, a new frame. So we uh, captured 20 frames in total. And uh, uh, for capturing, uh, well, also I should note that this is a synthetic day image, so it's reproducible. Um, and uh, uh, for capturing uh, these images, we performed a specific motions. It's following. So first uh, we did a parallel shift, so the pattern was parallel to the image plane and then we started tilting the pattern. And as we would expect, uh, the uncertainty is high as long as the pattern is parallel to the image plane because as mentioned earlier, uh, the focal length and principal point cannot be reliably estimated. And as soon as we start tilting the uh, pattern, there's a significant drop in uncertainty and uh, uh, it converges against the final value. For um, the radial distortion coefficients, on the other hand, uh, there's uh, immediately a strong drop and the uh, uncertainty stays about the same. Um, additionally, we reversed the motions, so we started uh, with uh, tilting the pattern and continued with shifting. And again, as we would expect, we are tilting, so we have some parallel, uh, so perspective shortening and can estimate the uh, um, intrinsic or pinhole parameters. Um, for the lower left figure, but what's interesting or remarkable is the lower right figure. As long as we're tilting, the uncertainty for the radial distortion parameters stay high. And only as soon as we start uh, uh, shifting the pattern, it uh, significantly drops. So what the experiment tells us is that we uh, actually need two distinct motions to capture both uh, uh, pinhole and uh, um, distortion parameters. And based on this experiment, we also derive our actual post-selection scheme which I introduce you here. So um, let's assume we are uh, targeting the uh, pinhole parameters. For the, here we want uh, to maximize the angular spread. And to achieve this, we, uh, um, exploit, we employ the following uh, uh, binary subdivision scheme. We start with the pink cameras and uh, place two new cameras uh, in the center between two existing, so the yellow ones. And then we uh, propose them to the user, and as soon as he uh, follow, uh, um, visited both, we can apply uh, again the subdivision scheme to get four new cameras, and so on. And as desired, it is, uh, maximizes the angular spread. Um, for the distortion parameters, on the other hand, um, as motivated earlier, we aim uh, for the regions with the uh, highest distortion, and also try to put as many sampling points there as possible. Additionally, uh, we remember the regions we already visited and set them to zero. This is indicated by the blue rectangles here. Which of these two schemes uh, get selected it depends on uh, the parameter with the highest uh, uncertainty, which you see um, in the bar plot on top. 
What you see there is not the variance, but the variance divided by mean, so we have a similar value range for all parameters. And in this case, uh, our method would uh, aim uh, for the pinhole parameters and the binary subdivision because the uncertainty for the principal point is highest. So uh, given uh, uh, we have a post uh, selection sequence now, let's uh, um, make some results, quantitative results. For this, uh, we used the consumer camera at 720p resolution and recorded a separate testing set consisting of 50 uh, images at various distances and angles. And uh, we compared our method uh, to uh, a protocol, <coughs> which is obvious in OpenCV. Uh, we used as measure the um, testing error and uh, the frames required until convergence. Also, there's a training error for completeness, which is also known as a reprojection, reprojection error. And as you can see, our method uh, uh, arrives at the lowest testing error using the lowest number of frames. Um, the open question now is, uh, okay, it says it uh, just requires 9.4 frames, but is this the minimal solution or could we uh, leave out some uh, of these frames without compromising calibration quality? So we uh, um, added a minimality test, which starts with uh, our calibration frames, like nine frames, and then tries to leave out some of them without reducing the calibration error. Um, the algorithm is in the paper, um, and uh, I will just give you the results. So uh, the post-selection row is like copied from the slide before and the test uh, gives us yes, we uh, uh, can go as low as uh, seven frames. Um, which seems uh, like we are doing lots of redundant work, but uh, one explanation for this is that we require two additional frames to determine convergence. Our convergence criteria is that the uh, uncertainty doesn't reduce further. So once we converged actually, we need one more frame to determine that uh, um, uh, we uh, didn't improve. Yeah, so this leads me to the conclusion. Um, yeah, first of all, maybe uh, probably the amount of frame can be reduced by using some more clever uh, convergence criteria. Um, then to make this uh, uh, generally applicable, um, we must consider narrow and, and wide field of view. Think of a telephoto lens. Then you would need to, uh, to print out a huge pattern uh, to uh, uh, be able to uh, uh, fulfill the post suggestions. And uh, this is uh, more of future work. Uh, we could also consider um, additional distortion models beyond radial and tangential distortion. So, uh, yeah. Here you see our tool in action, proposing the poses. Um, if you would uh, like to try this for yourself, the code is on GitHub and there's also a Linux package available. So thanks for your attention. Uh, do we have any questions? Are there any questions from the audience? Let's see, none. Uh, then a question for me. Uh, are you planning to extend this method also to stereo cameras and the multi-camera setups? Um, yeah, this was certainly uh, possible in a future work because uh, it's uh, kind of trivial because the calibration problem is kind of the same. You have just uh, um, an extrinsic more and two cameras. So this would be definitely possible. Thank you very much.